So I've had a wonderful experience as the convener of UPO 2018. This is a particularly exciting year to run a Congress in proteomics. It, the field of proteomics has matured in an amazing way. Uh, we've watched it begin as a field of study that focused on really just developing methods so that it could measure proteins and samples. Uh, over the years it became good at that and then had to develop ways to do that reproducibly so that we get the same results from laboratory to laboratory. But now it's emerged as a key tool for just general biology and biochemistry work. And so what we've seen is that uh, proteomics is now part of a much bigger whole and one that's now used routinely. And so a key element of our meeting this time was to bring in speakers who are working on the fringes of proteomics, but not really on proteomics, as a way of expanding our field of study, getting outside of what we do currently and building into newer and newer areas. And uh, it was a lot of fun identifying the best speakers for those areas and inviting them to come and, and hearing them speak. My vision for proteomics research is that it's time for us to become part of routine biology. I think now uh, we, we develop a set of tools for looking at probably the most important molecules in biology, the proteins. Uh, these, are the, these are the machines that drive all of the processes that occur in life, uh, from digesting things to building things to sending signals and everything in between. And uh, we need to be spending more of our time focusing on that aspect of biology. And I think the future for proteomics is to bring our ability to study those proteins, especially at scale, out to biology so that others can use these tools and we can learn more. I would love to tell students that this is one of the most exciting fields of science to be in. And I think this is an opportunity for them to learn skills and to understand elements of biology that they can then take with them and begin careers in a very, very exciting area. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of them uh, become investigators and, and chairmen and, and leaders of the field. Well, my experience as 2018 uh, co-convener has been very good. I think um, having a great team of people such as the other co-chairs, Josh, Ileana and John, the, uh, the interactions that we had on a, on a, on a bi-weekly basis and the ideas and suggestions that came through were highly interactive and we picked the best people we could outside of the field sometimes and really got the uh, program going. Uh, you mean outside of uh, dealing with these three uh, amazing guys? <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, I think we, uh, this conference represents such a diverse scientific community that uh, and we wanted really to make sure we portray that properly. So one challenge for us was to represent p scientists interested in technology development, those that are interested in biological discoveries or in diagnostics and clinics and really giving proper weight to all of these uh, aspects. Of course, others is geographical uh, diversity, make sure we maintain that for this in international community and gender uh, equity. That's a challenging question. And I think it, um, it's a challenging question for the field of, of proteomics because uh, what I've sort of got a sense for at this meeting is that if, you have, if you're gonna go to two meetings, what two meetings are you gonna go to? I think you're gonna go to one that's gonna be involved with technology so you can keep up with the tech. And the other one might be one where you're gonna go learn about domain um, biology, so whatever your biological interests are. So we have to try to capture both of those things at this meeting make sure we have an adequate representation of state-of-the-art technology, where it's going, what are the advances, as well as provide state-of-the-art um, biology. And what, we've tried, what we tried to do at this meeting with our plenary speakers is to bring in uh, really uh, uh, people who are, who are leading various fields in various areas, like, such as uh, uh, Stephen Quake with um, RNA-seq of single cells and so forth, so that the community has a sense of what what's the state of the science, where it's going, and how they can fit into that. It was vitally important. The um, access to uh, speakers and and new technologies that they've no they don't have the capability of learning usually on a face to face basis. These these kinds of opportunities are are, are, are so important to have. Um, not only teaching from computational side, but also wet chemistry and, and also mentorship. You know, how does one person become a PI? You know, those sorts of things, the, these things um, don't come naturally. 
and by having these tutors come from very exp experienced people to the younger people, that's a way that we can grow the community and also grow the, the people that are starting off in their careers and launching their careers. These workshops are so important for our community. It's a way also to recruit more of the, our younger community right, and get them involved and that get, get them excited about the diversity of proteomics, get them exposed to different technologies in proteomics and challenges in proteomics. So maybe we can get them more involved and uh, get these more um, readily available, maybe publicize them more and uh, put them on the website afterwards, make movies out of this, kind of what you're doing, Sanjeeva. I think that's going to be really an important component of the education. Absolutely critical in order to make sure that the community as a whole is doing state-of-the-art proteomics using the right statistical methods, um, using the right numbers of samples, using the right samples, in order that uh, the data that we produce is, is seen to be as important data. And the only way we're going to educate people is by bringing in experts and domain areas such as statistics and teaching people. For proteomics research is that we become, the, you know, not, a, not only a counterpart to genomics methods, but, but an, an equal partner. You know, genomics can only go so far in understanding what happens from the genomic level going to the transcript and then, and then stops at that point. But understanding those differences and what it results into a biological context really needs to have proteomics or proteins being analyzed and mm -hmm. the word proteomics is really just another concept of how we are doing things in a holistic and a, and a true quantitative manner and it really is hand in hand with genomics. It's not a poor cousin of, of genomics, it's really a uh, equal partner and the next step. All the drugs most probably are, are all developed against uh, proteins and you know, it's these, these types of um, technologies that need to be developed and, and completed so that we can get to these holistic mm -hmm. measurements. Yeah, I, I actually think that science overall would be significantly poorer without proteomics. And I think this is something that we in our community should advertise and should be proud of or, and we should uh, make this really evident. I think the proteomics field has matured quite significantly. There are still all the time technological advances, but the great time, I think this is an exciting time in proteomics because we now see all these methods, but they are really applied to the right biological questions. And they have already started to contribute such important fundamental discoveries in biology. And um, I think that this is really exciting and we should be highlighted more. But I think there's plenty of room to continue mm -hmm. doing that. But I, but I do think that proteomics needs to try to help find cures for diseases. I think that's what elevate that that's what will elevate the field in the minds of people that are providing the funding is if we make major contributions to um, drug discovery or to uh, target identification to help cure diseases or mechanisms of action of diseases. And Ileana's got some some great work that she's doing that's that's going to potentially lead to um, uh, significant medicines for um, influenza. So. I think that's what we need to be doing. We need to be proving our value by helping to cure diseases. Oh, the future is so bright. You know, there's so many things that they can do with this technology that, you know, it, we're just scratching the surface at the moment. You know, one of the things to always remember is, is you never get wedded to a technology. Things change over time. We've gone from Edmund degradation into mass spectrometry, and you'll start to see new technologies come through. Mass spectrometry will still be a mainstay, but you start to see plate-based techniques and you know, for the young, young people seeing that now, they have a, such a plethora of technology to get into, they should really grasp that with both hands and move forward into understanding these biological concepts. I think that this is the right time for the young science, uh, scientists. It's really the right, uh, right time and in the right field and uh, they should get involved more. They should get involved in the international um, organization, the international HUPO, they should get involved in the national HUPO. Uh, and they should embrace this sort of multidisciplinarity that proteomics is so good for, right? And uh, become this sort of scientist that can speak multiple languages, can do multiple things, can, can uh, be biologist and proteomics scientist, because that will give so much recognition to our field in other fields, in other scientific fields. Ah, uh, no. Hmm. The, the future is bright. You better wear sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh look, I, I don't think that you know, one person has to be just a single 
type of person in proteomics. Mm -hmm. There are so many different fields that fit into this, from mathematics, statistics, technology, biology. It's all of those fields can, can easily be fitted into all of this research. And so people that have a particular interest in one component, they can make such an impact. So don't be scared, just jump in. Thank nice. you, Sanjay. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, John. Sure.